One thing I've learned from writing technical documentation in the last few years is that good writing is skimmable, at least in the digital age. So since I look at my notes in Obsidian the same way as I do a sort of personal documentation, I think that a lot of the same principles apply. Today, I want to talk about an early access feature that the Obsidian team rolled out two weeks ago, and it's called Callouts. So before I demonstrate this, I want to say that this is only available right now in the Insider build version 0.14, but that build always gets pushed to the public. It's just a little bit ahead of the public release. So think of this as a bit of a sneak preview. Now, before Obsidian Callouts was released, I was using something called Obsidian Admonition. So if we go here, um, I can bring up my an Obsidian Admonition page, and it looked something like this. You would do three backticks, that's kind of the code block syntax, and you would do something like add note. Maybe you'd have a title here, like reminder, and then you'd have your note here. And because I have live preview turned on, if I enter out of this, it's going to look like this. So this is what Obsidian Admonition always looked like. So in general, the idea here is that to make your writing more skimmable, you have these kind of, well, call out boxes that highlight sections of your text and make sure that they address something that is about the notes that you're writing, kind of like meta notes. They're notes about your notes, but because they're visually distinguished from the rest of the text, it's a lot easier for you or for your readers to easily figure out whether something is important to read or only in specific situations. And that happens a lot in technical documentation. So it's no secret that I've used it a lot in sort of programming kind of notes. So if we go back to my vault here, let's look at my note on GG as a package manager for Go the language. And here's a type of call out or admonition that I used. And this is kind of like, this page tells you how to use what, it, what G is and how to use it. But this note, this particular call out is kind of like an aside. It's like, hey, just in case you get this error, here's how to troubleshoot it. And it's really cool that it's hidden by, it's collapsed by default. And you can just click on that. And then it says, oh, if you get the error G not found, hey, maybe restart your shell session after installation. So that sort of call out really helps when you're trying to quickly skim a page. So programming is certainly one use for it. And another one is tutorials in general. You know, I have this a lot for my Obsidian stuff in case I need to say that this only works for Mac or this only works for Windows or something like that. And I also use it a lot in my D&D games. As a dungeon master, I have different scenarios that I may not even need to go into depending on what my players decide to do. That is the perfect task for callouts or for admonitions. So I was using this admonitions format with a code block for um, basically since I learned about it. There, It is made by a TTRPG plugin developer called Jeremy Valentine, and he's made a lot of very popular ones like the Dice Roller and the Initiative Tracker and Leaflet, and it just goes on and on. But I'm digressing. This plugin was apparently so good that even the Obsidian team realized that it really should be part of Obsidian because a key part of Obsidian's functionality is documentation. So the big release is that they've now incorporated an admonitions-like functionality into core Obsidian, not a core plugin. So it's not something that you even have to install or enable. It just ships by default with Obsidian, which is really awesome. So let's look into how to use it. I'm going to go to my Obsidian callouts page here and the syntax is a little bit different from the admonitions one. Instead of the code blocks with the three backticks, this 
callouts functionality now uses block quotes. So you do a single block quote like an arrow, and then you do brackets and then an exclamation point. And then there are a bunch of different types, which we'll get into. But the most common one, I guess, is note. Then you would put your title here. And then you can put um, the rest of the note here. So this is now doing it as a block quote. And if I exit out of that, you'll see that it has a nice icon of a kind of pencil or pen there. And it is visually distinguished from the rest of the note. Now let's go into the types because there are a few of them. The first one I already showed you, this is a note. I put this within code blocks just to show you the syntax. And then this is what it looks like. Basically, this is the standard format of callouts. You just change whatever's here. And then you always put the title outside of the brackets and then the content of the note below it. So this is what a note looks like. That's probably the most common. And then the one, an, another one is abstract summary or TLDR. Now all of these are the same. So like this is a TLDR. So I can actually edit it here as well. So here in this case, I was using TLDR, but if I do abstract, it's going to look, um, actually it, it, it looks a little bit different now that I think about it. I thought it was going to look the, the same but it's also dependent on the theme that you're using. Yeah, so these three are actually different even though they're, they're semantically the same. Well, that's interesting. I just literally found that out right now as well. Um, and there's info and to do. So this I believe is the to do. And if I go to info, it looks slightly different, just has a little eye here. This is what I use for descriptions, what we call in, in TTRPGs, what we call box text. When players enter a new scene and there's a part that you read out word for word rather than impro improvising it, this is what I, I use for it. Then you have tips, hint, tip, hint, or important. This one is a tip. Let's see what important look like. looks like. All right. Yeah, all right, so there's, there's some um, highlighting going on there as well, and it's marked by an asterisk. There's success check done. I particularly like, I think it was done, it's kind of like the, the to-do had a checkbox. This one actually has the check. There's questions, help, or fact. There's warning, caution, or attention, which is what I use for errors or, or gotchas when you're when you're programming or something, things that you might fall into that I want to call out because I did fall into it. And there's also fail, failure, and missing. So this is all bad stuff, essentially. There's danger, error, looks like this with a little lightning symbol. There's bug, which I use quite a bit when I'm reporting bugs or documenting bugs anyway. This example, which kind of looks like abstract actually, uh, quote and cite, which is kind of a block quote, except a little bit fancier. So as you can see, there are a lot of different types of callouts. And aside from all of those, um, you can also choose whether it's collapsed or expanded. And that's kind of the folding behavior that I showed you earlier. So let's just do that now as well. I'm going to say bug and, um, and I'll say bug detected, let's say. And this time though, where just before the title, right outside of the parenthesis for the, um, the type that I'm using, I'm going to type a minus. And, and I'll put this is a bug and I get out of that. This is what it looks like. So it is very different from, from this one where it's just expanded by default. That's a default behavior. But if you add the minus there, that means that you're saying that this must be minimized or collapsed by default. So then you can always click on that and look, you see what was on in the text there. You can also specify that it's always expanded by default, but it already is always expanded by default. So you don't really have to set that unless you've changed the settings. 
So this is a really cool and easy way of having these different colors. I know a lot of people that have come from Notion are kind of missing some of that in Obsidian. Well, this is an easy way to do that. And you can also change how it looks by modifying either the CSS of, or of the theme or by selecting themes that just really use it to and, and display it to its advantages. This theme here that I'm using is, uh, let me check that because I'm sure that people will ask. This is one of the gems of the year, one of the themes that, that won. It's called Primary. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. And it's on the light setting. This is a test vault. And one of the coolest things about this new callouts feature is that it now works natively on Obsidian Publish. So I use Obsidian Publish for my public Obsidian vault. That's notes.nicolevanderhoeven.com. There'll be a link in the description if you want to see what that looks like. It's basically my way of learning in public. And I select different notes to publish on there for people to see, for anybody to see. Now, for a long time, admonitions, because it's a plugin, wouldn't show up there. And, and then there was a way to do it where you can change the CSS and then kind of do it that way. But now that Callouts is in Core Obsidian, it, you don't even have to do that. It's just going to work right out of the box. So all of your notes that have the, the Obsidian callout syntax on them will show up the same way in your Obsidian published site, which is really awesome. So you might think this is really just a format change, right? From admonition to callout. And part of it is that I asked about why they changed the format. And the answer was that, um, that having the block quote format falls back to block quotes in unsupported markdown renderer. So for for example, if you're reading this note in some sort in ID an IDE that doesn't support that syntax, it's at least still just going to look like a block quote, which does make more sense than it looking like a code block because you might not have code there. This is not just for code. This is for any sort of like sticky note that you want to put on your notes. And also because of because it just uses block quotes, this means that all of the markdown inside it also gets parsed, including links and embeds and even data view queries, apparently. And that also means that spell check can check it. Because if you put something in a code block, that's kind of a signal for spell checks not to not to have a look at the contents of that code block. So what happens with admonition because it's been around for a while, it's actually still up. And in fact, admonition style code blocks will continue to work. They're now supporting, Obsidian is now supporting both the callouts and admonition if you have ad admonition plugin still enabled, then you're still going to be able to use both. So it's not like it's going away, but you should probably use the call out syntax going forward, just because that's what everyone's going to be developing based off of. So there is also another thing that admonition is going to do is it does conversion. So if you have existing code block admonitions, then those can be converted to call outs. Actually, I want to show where you can find that. So if you go to settings here and look at admonition, there are a bunch of settings here, but let's look at the, yeah, the conversions. So you convert MS doc admonitions to callouts and you can convert code block admonitions to callouts as well. Now this will modify your notes. So just be a little bit careful with it, save a backup or, you know, do a push to Git if you save it in a Git repo like I do. But that's what admonition is going to be doing. And in addition to that, it's also shifted to being able to let you change the appearance of those callouts. So it has a bunch of functionality like, do you want to add drop shadows? And do you want it to be collapsible by default? Because I said that it's expanded by default, but you could change that behavior and, and toggle it. And then you could still just expand it on a case by case basis. But if you don't specify anything, then it'll just say that it should be collapsed. 
There's also the add copy button, which is actually really interesting because a lot of times that is something that I just want to copy and paste to like my players or something if I want to paste a description or if it, it actually is a code block or some sort of troubleshooting thing. So I enabled that and you can set admonition colors. You can also change the icons that are loaded there. So right now, admonition uses the font awesome icons. So I was showing you all of these different types of callouts, right? But those are the default ones. And admonition adds the font awesome ones as well. And you can even add your own types of um, icons. So you can load additional icons as so octicons and RPG awesome, which which sounds sounds really interesting actually. And a cool effect of that is we need to do this in admonition syntax. So it's code blocks. Let's say let's just go with question. This is a question. A cool thing that you can do with admonition is you can do icon and then choose an icon that isn't already in there. So as an example, I happen to know that there is a font awesome icon that's a cloud. So I'm just going to put cloud there. And then I'm going to put here's the answer. If I go out there, look, now it looks like a little green cloud. So I can change everything about how it looks. This is still in the admonition syntax though, but it functions the same way as callouts, just extended. I really like this for being able to say, to give instructions and then say, you know, this is Apple only and not for Windows. So that's really cool. So I guess the question is, and this was my question when I learned about these changes, is it still worthwhile to use admonitions because of all of these quality of life improvements? I think it is because, I, don't get me wrong, I'm very happy that Callouts is part of Obsidian now. That just made sense for an app that is so focused on notes and note-taking and documentation. You really need these different ways to take notes on your notes. But I do think that admonition is still worthwhile installing and using if you want to delve down into the specifics of this feature. So if you want different icons that make sense to you, but maybe not to other people, this is still the best way to do it. Another cool thing that I, I didn't show, let me show that now, is maybe you don't want to remember this syntax with either with the block quotes or with the code blocks. So with admonition turned on and enabled, installed and enabled, you can bring up your command pane, which for me is command P and I'm going to type in admonition and then you can just insert either a call out or an admonition and a bunch of other things as well. But I'm just going to insert a call out. And if you didn't remember what the types were, they're all here and this is what they're going to look like. Now, as I mentioned, um, I think these the ones that I grouped are actually supposed to look the same without the admonition plugin. It's just that um, it, either the admonition plugin or my theme is making them look a little bit different, but these are the standard ones. So let's, so then you can choose which one you want. You can have fail, uh, you can have the title there. You can choose whether or not it is collapsible. It even shows you a preview. So let's insert that and look. I didn't have to type out any of that and I didn't have to remember any of that syntax. So that's just a nice little upgrade that you can only get with admonitions. Again, Obsidian callouts at the time of this recording is only available in Insider Build version 0 0.14, which means you can only get it right now if you need to get it right now. If you'd have to pay for the Catalyst plan, which is a one-off $25 fee. I've paid that just because I wanted to give back to the Obsidian developers for this amazing tool that they just give for free. But if you're willing to wait, this feature, like all features, will soon be publicly available. Insiders just get it a little bit earlier. And when that happens, I'll pin a comment in the comments below for this video so that you know when it's available. And if you'd like to learn about other Obsidian plugins, I do have a video on the top 10 Obsidian plugins. So maybe check that out. 
Thank you for watching. Dankjewel. Doei.